Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg and welcome to Bead Shop Live. It is Wednesday, March 22nd, and it's great to see you all here. So sorry I'm a little tardy. I had to restart my equipment today. We're having another rainy day here in California, and I think that might be affecting my um my internet connection but i think we've got a good connection now so i think we're good so give me a thumbs up to say hello if you can hear me i think we're all good um i want to say a big thank you to gita over on facebook for doing that moderating and janice is back with us over on youtube saying hello and chatting over there so it's great to have you all with us today and i'm so excited that you loved my new tucson finds uh that i'm going to share a little bit more with you um in just in just a bit but first i wanted to uh double check and make sure um that uh you took a look at your um newsletter this morning um as you know let me let me do my due diligence here and put up uh, that, of course, you can find all of everything bead shop related over on beadshop.com on our Instagram, um, at the bead table on Facebook, and hit that like, subscribe, and notification button over on YouTube if you're watching us live or if you're watching us on replay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're an older viewer uh, throughout the years, welcome back. It's great to have you all. Um, I also wanted to say on that newsletter tip, Thank you for watching. And you can find all of the information on the project that we're doing today called Papillon. It's a born yesterday project, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But also to sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. Um, we had in our newsletter yesterday all about this, some of our new Tucson finds that I got in. And if you uh, opened your newsletter this morning, you saw we talked about our broadcast, which we're having now. And we also talked a little bit about our friend Francesca Watson. And I'm going to put it up on in the comments um, right now where you can go ahead and, um, and donate. Um, our buddy Francesca Watson uh, and her husband, artist Nick Watson, uh, they uh, have a painting and jewelry studio, a teaching studio in Bulvary, Texas. You've seen me go there to do live broadcasts with Francesca. I've taken classes there. Well, this past Saturday, and some of you may have heard this, this past Saturday they had a catastrophic fire um, in their 100-year-old building um, at the Makery in Bulvary, Texas. Um, and everything was a total loss, including their beloved studio cat, Sterling, perished in the fire and didn't make it. All of uh, Nick's artworks in all of his paintings, with the exception of one, and all of Francesca's oeuvre of work, and all of her tools, all of her teaching tools, everything in that studio burnt to the ground. So we um, are um, uh, getting it out into uh into our viewers i've seen it on social media um all over the place um we uh love francesca she comes on uh, our broadcast sometimes to say hello um francesca during the pandemic um she uh not unlike I did when I started broadcasting to you folks every day. Um, she started broadcasting to her metalsmithing community um, and it kind of became a thing, right? And then we had a um, kind of behind the scenes instructor group, all of us metalsmithing um, instructors and beating instructors. We got together and we um, formed a group and we taught each other uh, how to teach online. I've been teaching online for, I don't know, 20 years almost now uh, through the medium of video and online. Um, and so she really lifted others up in the community, not only students, but um, instructors as well. Um, and so now is our time to lift Francesca and Nick up. We hope to see the makery literally like a phoenix rise from the ashes um, and um, be another fantastic going concern um, in the uh, metalsmithing world. She has um, instructors come from all over the country. It's a 
beautiful place to teach. It's a beautiful place to take classes. So in the newsletter, you can find two links. You can find one, and we've put it up here, makeryarts.com. Thanks, Janice, for doing that. Um, you can donate through Francesca's um, Makery uh, website, um, and she hasn't set set a, a, a goal or, you know, asked people to do this for her. We're just doing this because we want to lift her and Nick up um, as fellow artists, uh, really important people in the community and as instructors. So you can go to makeryarts.com. You can make a one-time donation. That goes directly to Francesca and Nick without any um, without any uh, fees taken out. It goes directly into their PayPal. That's where we're making our donation from Beachop. Uh, you can also go, um, a GoFundMe has been set up also uh, by our friend Jessica Cote. She also teaches with Francesca, um, also is a fantastic metalsmith, does a lot of great projects and uh, has a lot of great tutorials out in the world. Um, you can, if you feel more comfortable, you can donate through the uh, GoFundMe campaign. If you're not able to donate, that's fine. We understand, you know, times are tough. Um, so uh, just send them uh, your, uh, as Kim is saying, a true kind soul. And our hearts are with you, Francesca and Nick. And they certainly, certainly are. So you can see it bouncing around on social. You can also share um, that social link. And um, I've been texting with Francesca. Um, she's doing okay, you know. Um, I send her a little encouraging um, texts, um, and soon I know we will chat in person. But she is completely overwhelmed right now with everything that is happening. So we want to say a big shout out and a lot of love to both Francesca and Nick, and also to the um, community, the metalsmithing community that relies on the makery for that inspiration. Um, will I know that she'll be back uh, bigger and better uh, than ever. Everyone in the industry is getting behind her, which is what I love about this industry. Not only are we in business, but we are also like a family. So, um, and speaking of family, it is great to have Janice back. She was out last week, but she's back better than ever. She's, um, over on YouTube doing the moderating. So jump over there and say hi to her if, uh, you are so inclined and I'm going to get started on our project today. So let me start by saying, um, folks, I know that some of the products that you love are sold out. Now, I went to Tucson, as you know, and you followed some of my Tucson adventures. So I was looking for new vendors, vendors that we haven't bought for in a while. And I found one of our vendors who sells this really fantastic, big and beautiful, um, enamel, um, what we call cinnabar. It's actually faux cinnabar. It's a resin. It's a wood resin, wood with resin over. Um, it's really, uh, beautiful pieces. And I'm going to show you those in a minute. Um, but they had a limited amount, but fortunately these are items that are reorderable. I've already made an order. So those of you who missed out on that papillon bead, because I used it, in the project, it'll be back in. So put yourself on the notification list for any of these pieces that'll be back in. The thing that won't be back in folks are the, um, pearls that I got. Um, we're going to have new, new and more pearls. Uh, but these pearls are directly from Hong Kong, from a Hong Kong vendor that I got, that I met it was great. I loved the quality was, it's really exquisite on these, right? So um, we uh, are super excited to offer those to you. So let me show you uh, the page here real quick. If you go over to, um, to uh, beadshop.com uh, and you click on the just in collection, there's a little, um, you know, a little uh, box there on the homepage, you can see, <clears throat> pardon me, all of the new stuff that we've gotten in. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll through that, folks, so you can see it. Um, in our just ends, you can see there's that lacquer. Oh, gosh, that fan. I showed them to my mom. My mom and I were 
playing around with some of the the pieces. And she grabbed the fan and she went, I haven't seen this in like 20 years. And I'm like, I know Ma, so good, right? So we've got that lacquer, we've got that lacquer in turquoise. We're gonna be adding more of this to our collection as well. So this is just the taste. We've got that floral flower. You can see there's that cloisonne butterfly bead, that pesky one. So beautiful. It'll be back in. I promise. It's the one I'm using in the project today. But the diamond turquoise flower would look great. Um, the beads I'm using today are the dyed raspberry potato pearls, and you'll see those live. Um, they're really gorgeous. I'm also going to show you the light olive potato pearls today. All the rest, I didn't keep anything here. I sent it all to um, distribution. So every single bead um, is out there for you. So um, that can be sent to you, uh, will be sent to you. Okay. So uh, we'll be getting those back in. So let me add my project here to the stream and let's get started. So I want to talk to you about the Born Yesterday project. This is a project that Janice did um, a, a while back. And uh, she originally did it with some of our vintage finds that we had in um, our collection. And she used some semi-precious beads, those beautiful vintage finds. The vintage finds are, um, what do I want to say, getting fewer and further between, right? It's getting hard, harder for us to get those in um, because we've sold out of them. We've sold them through. So we're trying to find some new kind of interesting things that also have that flair. These are not vintage. They're new. These are um, cloisonne, the cloisonne beads. Let me get a little closer with the, the camera here so you can see this. Um, let me zoom in just a touch so you can see it. Yeah, my computer's lagging a little bit today, so I'm sorry if um, things aren't as responsive as I want them to be. So just bear with me here for a moment. It should come up and get a little closer. There we go. Okay, so these are the cloisonne, these flowers, and um, uh, they're really great as pendants. Um, they're a nice big bead that has a nice big hole. Um, I have my tape measure here, so I'll show you. I, my millimeter gauge is over by the desk. What a surprise. But let me get my tape measure. You can see this. So um, what I've got here, this is uh, two. It's almost like an inch and three quarters maybe across. The whole size in these are nice and large, and I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to deal with those whole sizes and stuff as well, how I'm going to hang it. Um, but they're really gorgeous, gorgeous beads. The um, the lacquered wood or the what we're calling the faux cinnabar, this one's in the in the turquoise one here. Um, it also has a nice big hole. Um, so they're they're really great for pendants. Um, I may refer to it today as a pendant a little bit, but it's actually a bead. The hole goes straight through um, the piece there. Okay, so um, so you can hang it, uh, as I say, wire wrap it, whatever, but I'm gonna show you how I used it in a pendant in the piece. Okay, so here's that Papillon, um, the, the, the pendant part of the project I've called Papillon. So this is my take on Janice's Born Yesterday. And essentially what the project is all about, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you folks can see this. Hopefully my camera will, will catch up with me. I'm sorry. It's throwing me off just a little bit, but I hope everyone can see well enough. Um, so in Janice's pieces, she had the bead, the semi-precious bead, um, and then the, the, the macrame in between. So it was just kind of a, a planer, what do I call, um, what I call like a pearl macrame chain, right? Well, what I added was I added a little, uh, kind of a, a little decorative feature, and I used some 11 knots and an 8 knot. 
And I thought that little flower motif really kind of harkened back to the flower motifs here in these beads. Um, and I really liked the way that it looked. So I'm going to show you how, um, how to make this little motif as well. This little seed bead motif would come in handy in a lot of your, um, you know, a lot of your different designs far and beyond born yesterday. So uh, what I have here, and I'm going to finish this off for you today so you can see it. Um, bear with me here just a second. Why isn't my, I think this is going okay. I think we're good. Sorry, the, the camera issue is throwing me off. I'm so sorry about that, everyone. Let me take a drink of coffee so that um, so that I can um, so I can be uh, be fortified from that. So the the threads you're going to use the the take that I did on this today, I used the micro ceylon, which is the um, the base thread, and I'm going to show you why, namely because I like to use a double strand here, and then I like to have that double strand, and I have to get these pearls on that double strand of micro ceylon, right? I could have done the macrame uh, section with the micro ceylon as well, but I wanted the macrame to be a little chunkier, right? So um, I used the fine weight ceylon here for the macrame over the top. So let me show you how I set that up. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, my laptop is plugged in. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I don't know. It's I think the rain here is just, I don't know, I feel like it's slowing everything down. So the cloisonne, um, they're calling this, uh, like we're calling it kind of a faux cloisonne. It's, um, it's a resin, uh, kind of a bead here, right? So, um, the, uh, but it's made to imitate, um, I'm sorry, the cinnabar, it's made to imitate that old school cinnabar here. So, um, I'm actually going to put the camera back on this section here. Let me add this in and let me show you folks that, um, that really beautiful, bear with me here just a second while I bring it down. There we go. Those are the lacquer wood beads, the three that we have. Uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to take this camera out of, um, out of rotation here for just a second. I want to make sure that everything is going okay. Good. Yep. That's fine. Thanks. Again. Just keep looking at those pretty beads. You can see me here. Check that camera. Let me go ahead and put it back into rotation here. Nothing like doing this uh, live and in person. As I always say, folks, going live is not for the faint of heart, right? But I am always up to the task. There we go. Okay, let me add this back to the stream. Whoops. Oh, I need to connect it. Hang on. Hold that phone. Let me connect. And then we'll get back to it. There we go. Close that up and put this back in its little holder. And we are back in business. There we go. Let me remove this one. Okay. And highlight this. All right. I'm back. So, uh, and we're all good. I didn't want the, um, the, um, uh, stream to kind of fall out while I was in the middle of the demo. So let me show you how I set this up. Okay. You can see the necklace here. I've used a strand of pearls here. Um, I've used those seed beads, the 11 knots and the eight knots. The pearls I've used are the raspberry potato pearls in this sample. 
I used the 8 4270, that 8 dot there, and then I used the um, light metallic bronze, the 457 is what I used here. But you can use any of these beads, any, you know, any colors that you like that pick up the, the, the kind of the flavor of your bead here, right? I wanted this to kind of have a monochromatic kind of a palette. So this pearl, the, the raspberry colored pearl, really picks up, I think, the, the background of this beautiful butterfly bead here. So I thought they were kind of a good match. And I didn't want anything to take away from kind of the beauty of this, but I did want it to have, um, I don't know, a look that um, kind of accented it. So that's why I went with the more um, monochromatic, uh, this uh, Ceylon here, and then just a little touch of that raspberry color in that A dot. Okay. I also have, these are the olive pearls here. So I'm going to show you how I set this up first. And then we're going to come back to this and, and finish this up. Okay. So let me just set this aside for a minute. And I'm going to use these, um, these ones here to show you how I begin it. Okay. I'm going to use the same Ceylon there. Um, you can use really any Ceylon for the base as long as it's fine. This doesn't really show so much. Okay. But the outer one, this is the, this is the micro here and this is the fine. We're going to use that fine weight. Um, and the, the colors, you can see it, it's right on the, the project page, but I'm going to click over, um, and just double check. Um, if you click on the, the homepage there, you'll see Papillon, which is the project. And I've got the micro Ceylon in wine and the fine Ceylon in sable. But you, as I say, do whatever color, um, whatever color works for you. Okay. So I'm going to reel off for the project, uh, what I did to measure the thread was I pulled out, this is the base thread, remember. This isn't really like the um, poetry project where the the thread uh, underneath the pearls and the thread coming out of the pearls are used together to make that macrame. I've done it separately. So the base thread is separate from the thread that I macrame over the top with. So what I did to measure, and I wanted enough so I wouldn't have to add thread. So I just took my thread, my fine weight that my pearls are going to be on. And I brought it around my neck. Okay. Like this. And I made sure that I had some extra in case I needed to knot it or do whatever I did with it. Right. So I brought it around and then I doubled it over. Okay. So you can see there's that double and I pulled it here at the end and I clipped it. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. Then I'll go back to my overhead camera here. Um, then what I did was I used, I've got a nice long thread here. I, and I'll, let me measure just so you've got a measurement. So let me get my measuring tape. And remember this is doubled. It's about 50 inches or so, a little shy, 48 inches, but it's doubled over right? So it's 48 inches twice. Okay. So what's that? 96 inches, I think. So I'm going to use, I need a needle on here, right? To, um, to string so I can string my pearls on this double strand. So I've got the fine, uh, flexible eye needle. Can you see that? there. It's kind of hard to see in my hand, but I've got the fine one. The medium one will probably work as well, but I had the fine. And so I know that works through the pearls and through the 11 knots. So I'm just sliding on half of my strand or half of my thread and going towards the center here. Okay. Like so. Now what I can do so that my pearls and stuff don't fall off, I could tie a knot on here, but I don't really need to, right? Because I'm just going to start um, macrame. So let me get the edge of the, the board 
in focus here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave myself, I don't know, a few inches, not that many, about four inches. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to get my clip and I'm going to clip it to my board here. And then let me raise this up just a little. And then I'm going to bring, draw this strand across to the other side of my board here and clip it down. Okay. So now I'm going to start off, let me get my, my sample. Whoops, I'm dropping my pearls. Hang on. Let me grab the sample so you can see it. Um, it's a tangled mess. There we go. Uh, here it is. This is where I started. So can you see how I just came in and I... Let me make sure you can see this. There we go. And I just started my macrame here and started with my first pearl. Okay. So let me reel off my fine Ceylon. Okay. Let me get back on the screen here so you can see me. I get my fine and I want enough to work with, but not so much that it's um, too long for me to deal with. Okay. So I'm going to take about a yard I guess or so that'll be enough for me to work with now it's going to be easy um pretty easy to um add thread onto this okay so i've clipped and here's my thread again this is fine weight so let's take a look at um at this and this is a great uh um comment from Joy. Joy is saying, Janice, I hope you will speak to monochromatic when you cover color study at the retreat. My idea for monochromatic is to use the same color number in different bead sizes. I can use help. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about um, uh, a lot of things uh, at the retreat that relate to, to color for sure. One of the things, um, and I need to I need to put that on for a free tip Friday um, because monochromatic honestly doesn't mean using all of one color. Um, we would use tones of one color. We'd also use maybe a little glint of a color that um, enhances it. So yeah, there's a whole lot about monochromatic that we can talk about in beads. So Joy, super excited that you're coming to the retreat. Um, we're going to have such a good time um, there. Uh, so I'm going to start by um, jumping in and tying my first knot around, um, around my thread. And let me get a little tighter in here so you can see it. The knot that we're using is the, um, the flat square knot, right? The two half hitches to make that full macrame knot. So I find the center of my cord. This is my fine weight Ceylon. And I'm going to start. It doesn't matter if I start from the left or the right, but I do want to make sure that my strands are even. So let me just make sure I'm in the center, which I am. I'm here. Now I'm just going to do my macrame. If you need a little bit of refresher um, on our uh, on this macrame stitch, you can go to our um, our website in our kind of basics, our skill builders, and you'll see how to do the square knot. But essentially, I make my loop past my thread under my center. Make my loop. I'm going to the, my left this time. Bring my thread up and over that center thread. Now with the right leg, I'm coming over that cord, under the center cord, and up and through that loop. That ties my half hitch, and I tighten it down. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to come in, and we'll tie that second, um, that second half of this knot. So I go towards my right-hand side with that loop over the left, under the center, and up through that loop, and tighten. And there's my full square knot. So I'm going to do this, like I like to say, at Kate's speed. I started out by tying maybe four uh, full square knots, four or five. You decide. If you want this to be more 
bead heavy with less space in between, tie them a little closer, okay? If you want your space to have, a, you know, a little more room between your pieces, tie them a little further away. Uh, that's three. I'm going to do, I guess, maybe five. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever works. Now it's time, folks, to add some beads. And let me show you how to do this. I, I like to add my little bit of macrame at the beginning, and then um, now I'll add my beads in. So let's see how that, how that looks. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to undo my thread, my, my, my clip here on this side so I can free up my needle. Okay. Let me take my zoom out just a hair so it's not so close. There we go. And I'm going to get my pearls and here are my, uh, my smaller, uh, green olive pearls here, right? Like this. I'm going to take a few of these off. And since these pearls are smaller, maybe I'll, I never like to do the same design twice. I've got a few of my pearls here. I'm going to put these aside so they don't end up on the floor, though they may. Um, I'm going to do this with three of the plain, th three pearls, and then uh, a, a flower motif. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm going to get these 11 knots here. Uh, those are those bronze. And I just happen to have sitting here left over from that project with the um, cobblestones. I have these green, uh, that gold luster, a dot. So I'm going to use those. Um, I don't have the color number right here in front of me, but it's the a dot, the green gold luster here. And you can kind of see that you can use, again, you can use whatever color floats your boat. So now I'm going to get my needle. Okay. And then my, remember my thread, this fine, or my, the, the micro is threaded through the needle. This is my fine weight, my fine, um, uh, flexible eye needle. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to string those pearls on. Okay. And I'm going to string a little ways. I'm going to string these three, one, two, and three. Now I'm going to string on my sequence for my seed beads. So I did one 11 knot, one eight knot, one 11 knot, and then I'll put on three more pearls. One, two, and three. I'm really pleased with these that I, the, the pearls we got we in Tucson, there's more to come. I'm going to actually give you a sneak peek on what's coming Friday. Um, but, um, the quality, even though these are colorized, right, they're not the natural color. Um, the, the color, uh, is really just beautiful, really vibrant, very stable. Uh, it's really just a gorgeous, uh, a gorgeous bead. A, a whole bunch of them are just gorgeous. So after another bracing drink of coffee, let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to come back in and in order to macrame, I need this thread to be taut on my board. So I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to click it, clip it down there at the bottom. And I'm going to slide this bead up the first one. Now I think I'm going to do fewer knots in between since these are smaller. So basically I just start like if you do the poetry project or any of this, right? Um, well, you know, you, um, you can make them closer. You can make them further away. doesn't matter. I'm going to make mine these since they're smaller pearls a little bit closer. So I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pair. I'm going to do two full square knots. Let me see what that looks like. Janice is chatting about how she had a little bit of a, I'm saying a little bit of a health issue, but yes, Janice, we are just chatting over on the YouTube. We are so glad that you are healthy and happy and we're glad to have you back hundred percent. 
So we'll see here, I've got those three. I guess I did three. I'm going to slide this up so that it's a little closer like that. Um, and then we'll compare it to the one I did before. But we just go back and forth, tying those knots back and forth here like so. Let me tighten this up a little bit. So I guess I am doing three like that. You can see what that looks like. I'll slide my next one in. So these are just a little bit closer, this side here. Okay. They also look really nice without any seed bead embellishment, right? So you can decide what works for you visually. Okay, but I want to show you how I did that seed bead motif. So now <clears throat> I've got my three here. And what I did was I just took my fine weight. You can use a little zap glue at the end if you want, but it goes through that 11 knot, she says, hopefully. It goes through that 11 knot really easily. Um, so I'm going to slide those three up to the center there. And now I'm going to slide three of the 11s on both of these strands. Sorry, I'm going to give this a little bit of an angle cut. That should make my life a little bit easier. These are tiny little beads. Yeah, that angle cut really did it for me. There we go. So I've got three on this side. Can you see that there? Those three. And now I'm going to do three on this side. Let me angle cut. The cut's a little blunt on the end of these, so angle cut it. But again, you could use that zap to make a needle, or you could use your um, another flexible eye needle as well if you felt the need to. Okay, so these are in. So I've got, you can see here, the motif, the 11 knot, the 8 knot, the 11 knot, and then flanked by three 11 knots to the right and three to the left. Okay, now I'm just going to come in and tie those on, make a, a regular macrame knot. So here we are. And the loops, instead of being empty, have the beads inside, right? So I'm going to do three of these. Whoops, my thread came out of my clamp. Put that back in. Three full square knots here. But look at how pretty that um, little flowery motif looks there. I think it really just adds a nice glint of a, a little design element. It looks kind of like a little flower. And that glint of green there in the center looks beautiful. So then I'll add the pearl, okay, and continue going. So then, so I did that, okay, for a ways, right? Like so. And I continued on this one you can see I went bead motif, bead motif. So I'm going to show you how I did the centerpiece portion of this next, and then I'll show you how I'm um, measuring this, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, closing and closure. Let me make sure I untangle this so I don't have a big tangled mess. So here's the centerpiece here, okay? Get this out of the way. Let me get those beads out here. So I've got some room to work. My trusty triangle. I thought also about using one of these, the, the cinnabar or the, the lacquer 
pieces there in the center. That would look amazing. Um, you can also use another one of the cloisonné pieces. I'm going to show you with this cloisonné since that's what I used in this piece here. So to make this into a pendant, and it doesn't have to go um, on, you know, on this strand. You can string it. You can do whatever you want, right? Put it on anything. Uh, you could even remember this, um, the piece I did with the cobblestones. Remember that from that pre-tip Friday? That would be beautiful with this center piece on them as well. Okay. So what I did was, let me scoot this guy. I might actually even put that on there because I kind of love it. Um, what I did was I used some leather cord and I needed the correct size of leather cord to go through this centerpiece, right? The holes are pretty big. So I used the 0.5. I could also use the Chinese knotting cord with this as well. Um, it didn't, doesn't make any difference. Whatever will fit. The, the 0.4 millimeter CKC would work also, but I did use the... Um, the leather because I wanted the look of leather here. So what I did was I came in and on this pendant, the bead that's now a pendant, I macrame. And I'm not going to take the time to, to show you this portion because you, you know how to do this. You would just start, do your macrame on your long strand here, macrame, macrame, macrame down until your loop was large enough. And then you'd bring it together. And then what I did was I got those macrame tails and I macrame just a little short section together. Okay. What I'm going to do instead for this one is I'm going to bring this, I'm going to cut a piece and I'm going to figure how much loop I need, how much, you know, um, width I need uh, in the loop to go over my pearls. This one you can see I made pretty large, not so large that all you see is loop, but large enough that this slips over um, the, the pearls itself, okay? Um, so usually I go a little bit to see what size I'm going to need, then I'll make this piece because this also figures in um, how, uh, where I'm going to hang this, how long I'm going to make this piece. Okay. So if I were making this for this piece that I've got here, though, I may eventually add it on to these guys because they're so cool. You need to decide since this is a flower, is it going to hang this way with the two petals up and then the single petal down, or it can reverse this way. So I'm, I'm going to come in and instead of bringing my macrame together to hold this, this loop, in place. I'm going to tie a knot. Okay. And the knot I'm going to tie is a little double overhand. I'm going to make that loop and I go through once and I'm going to go through twice. And I want to make sure this loop doesn't have to be giant, right? It just needs to be large enough to slide over your pearls. So I'm going to push it up close up that loop like so. Then, there we go, pull it a little tight. So then what I have to do is I have to get these two strands right in through this bead. Now that bead is hollow, so it can pose a little bit sometimes of a challenge, okay? So you could use a big eye needle to get it through, but since I have my wire needles here, I'm gonna use these to get them through, okay? The big eye needle will work, but you can see the, the, the leather itself isn't stiff enough to go through, it'll go through the, the, the bead, but you'll be doing this forever, right? 
So what I do sometimes to kind of help me along, I'll get this wire needle through. And if I can see it through, I'm going to take it out of camera range for just a second so I can get it into my focal range to get it through there. These hollow beads are kind of a bear. Oh, before I do that, I would have to take it off. Before I do that, I put a bead on the top. So hang. Hold the phone. These bone beads, these basket beads that we got, they also have a nice big hole in them. See that? So I doubled those up. There we go. So now let me get this wire needle. Sometimes it just goes right through. I can kind of visualize that center line. But this one, since all of you are watching, of course, I can't quite get that through. But I will. You just have to tell yourself who the boss of those beads are. And it's you. Gosh, I can't quite see. You know what I'm going to do? You're going to watch me do that like all day. I'm going to get a, a, a big eye needle. Bear with me here just a second. I bet that big eye needle is going to uh, go through a little bit better. So I'm not... Um, so it's not watching paint dry, right? Uh, I've had no trouble with that needle before. The big eye is this one, right? It has a tip, a pointed tip on both sides. And then when you open up the center, there we go. Can you see how it has a big eye in the middle? So I'm going to slide this bead up. Let me go ahead and lock that leather into this big eye needle. And what I do is I kind of lock it in so it's coming through like that so it doesn't pull out as I'm working with it, right? Then back to this trick. I got new glasses, but it's not really helping me as much, is it? Let me get it out of, more into my focal range. I'm going to give it one more, one more go, and then I'm going to switch beads because um, while this is certainly doable, it's not that exciting for you to watch me do it. So the these beauties are um, not hollow, <laughs> right? So that's what I'm going with now. All right. So sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Kristen's saying I like watching paint dry. It's very kind of you, but uh, not really, uh, not really what I'm trying to get across today. So let's see if I can get these two in there. It's a good practice anyway to see if these 0.5 millimeter will work. And what I need, I need just a little extra help. If it doesn't, what I'll do is I'll just run that, that along the back. But see, the two strands go through here as well. So it's good that I did that. And so now you can see I've got that. You could have macrame, as I said, on the top, right? Um, or I just left it bare like that. I'm going to tie my knot here at the bottom, going over once, going over twice, and down. Now, I could continue to embellish this with some more little beads or things like that, because, again, this is the 0.5, but I'm just going to call it a day and clip. I'm actually going to angle cut these a bit just underneath. And so you've got a beautiful pendant with these um, that you can use for anything, 
right? It doesn't have to be this particular project. So let me get myself back on the screen, okay, and uh, show you then how I measured. Let me get myself here. Um, let me take this off. If you're having any trouble with your screen, go ahead and just hit refresh, and that picture should come back up. Sometimes with a live broadcast or whatever your connection is, um, you lose either sometimes sound or you lose the picture. So hit that refresh and you should be back in business. So here is the piece that I've made so far. So can you see how I have dangled the drop from the necklace? And I'm going to figure out how long I want this to be, okay? You either want it, let me step back a little bit. You either want it to hang like longer, like I'm wearing a tunic today, or you want it to hang kind of higher. You don't want it to hang two in the middle, if you know what I'm saying, because uh, that won't be too flattering. Um, but let me see if I get a little closer to you. I'm going to scoot this down. My mom says she's in a parking lot close by. It sounds kind of creepy. <laughs> she can stop by and get that needle through. Perfect, Ma. Perfect. I bet she's doing marketing or she's, maybe she's buying, I, she said earlier she was buying fabric. Let me see if this, so this length is pretty attractive right here, right? So this can come here in the middle. And also what I didn't think about doing since this has a pattern and you may want to think about this um, moving forward. I didn't make a center point for this and I'm going to move back to the overhead camera so you can see this. Um, but let me uh, go here with this um, with this overhead one. Um, that I could have put two pearls next to each other so it would hang in the middle, right? It doesn't matter that this is, um, you know, that this is this way. It doesn't, it doesn't, you wouldn't have noticed it if I hadn't pointed it out, right? But if you've decided where your center is, I might make you know, do a pearl, then a little bit of macrame, then another pearl, and then continue on to the end. So it doesn't have this in the center. This will just kind of hang to the side like this, which is also fine with me. Okay. But this looks like it's about the right length. So now I need to make some, um, <coughs> pardon me, I need to make some decisions. Okay, so, uh, and Cindy's asking the raspberry pearls and she sees that are dyed, um, these are dyed, uh, they won't lose color. Uh, they're pretty color fast, just like any of the dyed freshwater pearls that they've got out in the world now. Um, they are pretty stable um, color wise. I wouldn't leave them in the sun. Anything that's in the sun that's been what we call in the business enhanced, um, will um, have uh, maybe some color loss issues moving forward. So you really want to be careful about, you know, like if you're storing your necklaces or whatever, you don't want to uh, leave them, uh, leave them in the sun. Don't, you know, hang them in your window or whatever. It'll, um, and anything that's been dyed. Okay. You don't want to do that. So now I'm going to finish this off. So see how I finished it here with this uh, macrame. So I'm going to uh, go here and I'm going to add um, a pearl here to the last one. And I'm working this out in my head and talking it through all at the same time. So just, um, just hang, hang on. Here. And Janice has a really great handout for this born yesterday. She put it up. Um, she put it up in the comments. If you go to the born yesterday project, 
you can find the handout that Janice did, and she has a lot of nice details on how to do that centerpiece, um, Janice style. So uh, you can download that handout there. So you can see, I'm going to put my last one here on, and I'm just going to come around. And you can see on this cord, one side is shorter and one side is longer because I didn't find the center of my cord when I added the thread on the, my last thread adding, right? So what you want to do if you have to add thread, let me just tell you this really quickly. What I do is I add it kind of in the middle of a macrame section. So I'll do like three little macrame knots, and then I'll get a fresh piece of thread off my cord, and I'll put it underneath, and then I'll just start macrame over all of this here, and I'll macrame about two stitches, add some glue, and then clip away my old threads, and then just continue macrame with my new threads here. Okay, so... Um, so that's what I did. So now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue my macrame. I'm just going to do like a, a few, right? Because what I have to do next, I, I'm going to use, uh, the closure for this. I'm going to use one of these little buttons, one of these little beads. It's small, but I think it'll be fine as a closure, especially um, you can, um, uh, you want to make this loop small enough. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add this bead on. We want to add the bead first. You can also use a regular clasp or a button or whatever, but I want to see if this is going to work. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to thread this bead on, uh, not yet. You know what I'm going to do? I am actually going to put a couple, bear with me here just a second. I'm, I'm working this out in my head. I didn't want to finish it yesterday because I had to let it simmer. And so this is what I was simmering about overnight. I'm going to tie like four, maybe six full square knots here, All right? There we go. Now, I need to have some space here because the loop is going to have to sit here, right, below this bead um, so it catches underneath this bead and doesn't come apart, right? So to help it catch... I'm going to add two A dots. And the holes in these A dots are pretty big, right? Because remember, this is micro seal on here. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'm going to add my bone bead here. Let me make sure I went through the right holes. There we go. That slides down, and I'm going to go back through those A dots. And tighten. Center those A dots right in the middle. So they're hanging nicely. Okay, let me get tight on here so you can see this before I do any more steps. Okay, let me zoom in. A little tighter so you can see that. So you can see there's my couple of my beads. I don't know if I need those in all honesty. See how it's making this kind of skew out a little bit here? So what I'm going to do is I think I don't, I think I don't want them. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I do. I don't know. Maybe I just want one. 
because I want, I need something to pull this thread back in tight after it goes through the bead, right? Making sure you folks can see that. Let me go through here. I'm just going to go back through one. <clears throat> I think that's better. There we go. That's better. See, that's, that's better already. Looks good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I could run this strand just back down. Like I could go through this macrame. I could run it along that macrame and macrame over the top <clears throat> with this strand here, which is probably what I'll do. But I actually am thinking that I'm going to split these strands and also macrame them down. That will be the most, um, the sturdiest way of doing this. So I'm gonna clip my needle off. Let me just make sure that I'm in camera frame here. <clears throat> Let me zoom out just a hair. There we go. I think you all can see this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these strands. Center that bead. And I'm going to macrame this section here. I'm going to turn this all around because I want to macrame towards me. And I want to give myself, I had a little, there it is, my trusty cord, kitchen twine, because it's always easier to macrame when you have everything nice and tight. Let me bring this down. I just wanted to use this little button or this little bead as a button. Again, you could use things that are bigger, but I just wanted this. So I'm using it. Okay. Nice and tight, see that? Let me get my first macrame stitch with all four of these together. And you'll see just a hint of that wine colored cord. The tightening makes that a little loose. So let me tighten that back up. I'm going to take that out and tighten this back up. I think I need to tie a knot before I put it in that little <clears throat> in that little leash. Because this, this first step right here that I'm struggling just a little bit to do is the most important. It's going to make your bead sit the nicest. Right, nice and even. So there, there we go. That's what I want it to look like. So I'm going to try and keep that tension as I bring this around and then under and then tie that first macrame knot right in place.
walk that sucker right up. There we go. See that? That's, whew. All right, let me take a breath here for a second. And let me continue. I'm gonna do a couple of more knots. As I say, it's a little easier to make this macrame stitch when everything is tight, but pulling on that little bead while it's not completely secure takes it out of whack, right? So we don't want that. So I'm going to anticipate and add a little bit of glue to where I'm going to macrame over. Right there. Okay. And I'm going to come down and macrame over the top of that. Then I'll add a little bit more glue when I'm done. I'll let it sit overnight, or at least until this evening. And then I'll cut the tails away, or I'll use my thread burner. Okay. It looks like I've got room for two more knots, so I'm going to make one more, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on my final knot. to secure it. One more. Now here's my last one. So I'm going to tie that square knot and I'm going to go through that loop. There we go. Now, before I tighten anything, See where that loop is there? Before I tighten anything, I'm going to add a little more glue to where those loops are going to sit, right? Now I could, if I wanted to, I could secure this bone bead now to the side of the board, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuss with it. So I'm going to pull that in tight that glue is going to grab onto those loops that I've done there. Okay. And now I'm going to add one more drop there, one drop there, flip it, and there. Let that sit. And then I'll use my thread burner so that my threads will cauterize and be nice and tight or nice and sealed off there. Okay trying to get, as you know, you can guess what I'm trying to do, get the lid back on that GS. Oh, come on now. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get this in. Okay, there we go. Good. All right, so now my next trick for the other side is... Uh, we're going to have to make the loop so the loop fits, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my strands around. Sorry, I had a little bit of a glue spill here that I had to pick up. There we go. So I'm going to cut these a little shorter so they're not in my way because I've got so many threads on my board right now that I want to clear the decks just a bit. So here's my other side. Okay, so all I need to do here, and this is, I have to add some thread, okay, because I don't have any spare thread here. So that'll be pretty easy. I'm going to come in, let's put this, I'm going to really carefully with my clamper clamp that in, clamp this to that side. And I'm going to get my fine weight right? You could also use a pin. That's a good, um, that's a good, uh, suggestion. Use a pin to pin that bone bead down to the board. You could do that too. However you wanted to secure it. Let's make sure that this is in. Okay. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do this kind of fast, right? But I need to make probably not that much of the macrame 
in there because um, the loop is going to be pretty small because we don't need a giant loop to get over that bone bead. So see here, I would just come in and I'd just start tying on. If I were adding thread and this was, I had tails here, I'd just run the tails of that thread underneath here for a few stitches, glue it, and then um, cut them away later. Let's make sure this is nice and tight. And I'm still using this fine weight cord. And I'm going to macrame. <clears throat> and I'll test it after I get to where I think I need to be. As I'm doing this, I'm going to keep one eye on questions. It looks like I've got most of your questions answered. Um, let me talk a little bit about the threads while I'm doing this. Um, you could use, the, the micro sealon is what you want to use for the base of this, right? Because you need to get the pearls over this thread. And I want to use a thread that's doubled, okay, for security, right? <clears throat> so that micro sealon is what I want to use. I briefly thought about using silk as the base, but silk without knots can be a little stretchy. Mm, you know, I, I didn't love it. I could use the silk with needle. I've actually done that before with the poetry and that would work. But I thought that the best one to use for my purposes was the micro sealon. Now, for the strands, for the macrame that I'm doing over the top, I'm about halfway there, I think. <clears throat> for this, I'm using the fine weight sealon. Now, you can mix this up and use a, um, a Chinese knotting cord if you wanted to. Um, the 0.4 millimeter you could use the 0.5 if you wanted it to be a little bit heavier. You could also use the regular Ceylon for this. It just depends on the look that you want for your overall bracelet or your overall necklace rather. Okay. So I urge you, if you're going to change cords, do a little experiment, you know, and see what works for you. You can also change colors midway, right, through the project. You could, you know, add on a different length of Ceylon that's a different color. We've seen Allie do that in some of her projects. Let me measure. I'm coming up to a point where I want to measure this and check the loop. So let me get my tape measure wherever I've tossed it. That new section that I've made is about an inch, just about an inch, which is a good one. So I'm going to unclip this, form my loop. It's just a little small. Looks like I'm going to need about an inch and a half maybe for that. So I'm going to bring this back down. Let's continue to knot. Again, I'll go at Kate speed here, trying to go as quickly as I can. What I could have done also to make this end match the other end, I could have put an 11 knot bead right here, right? So when I bring this around and go through, it would have gone through a bead. Had I been thinking of that, that's probably what I would have done, though it's not really going to make that much of a difference, really. In the end, it would just have a more balanced look at the back. Janice is saying that she's made um, this design with heavier beads. Um, the whole idea being 
that whatever you choose for your base cord, it needs to go through doubled in the center. That's the thing to carry the weight. You don't want a single thread running up the center of this macrame. You want it to be doubled. I'm going to tie two more and let's measure and see where we're at. So we've come a little past an inch and a half, which sounds about right. Again, you don't want to make it too big because you don't want this to fall out. Yeah, there we go. I like the looks of that. See that there? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to macrame down right here. I actually made this a little long, so I'm just going to figure out what fits. That looks like it'll fit. Yeah, good. Let me look at it. No, that's about, that's about right. So what I'm going to do, make sure you can see this. I'm going to clamp that whole thing to the board. Can you see that there? So I'm not going to have the issue with this loop scooting around and stuff, right, when I'm trying to macrame. So I'm going to split these strands that are in the base, and then I'm just going to macrame that portion down. I'm also going to clip this so it's tight. Again, a little easier to macrame if everything is kind of taut on your board. Let me tie this first knot and then I'll get everything. There we go. See that there? I'm going to turn this just a little so it's facing the right way. And then we're going to macrame it, folks, like we mean it. And this little dash of color here is fine. I like it. We will have a little nod to the thread that's underneath in the base. And since it's micro, it's not making everything too you know, to um, big, you know, at this portion. It's not like I'm adding another super heavy thread. So it just looks a little bit heavier, but not out of proportion. Tighten. Now this comes to the point where I'm adding glue. So let's carefully add a little bit of glue to this last segment. And then I'm going to make two more knots. And then the last knot, the third knot that I make, actually, this is it, the second knot. That's because it's pretty big. I'm going to add a little bit more glue and a little bit of glue on those portions of the cord that are going to be the, the loop. So that when I tie that thread, the sides of that knot get glued in. There we go. That looks perfect. I'm going to come in with just a little bit more, undo it, add that glue there, let that sit, as I say, let it sit, and after it's the, gear, the glue has cured, like this evening, or at least a few hours, then I'll come in with my thread burner and burn that off. So let's neaten everything up. We did it, folks. We did it. Let me get that clamp out of there. I'm going to go ahead and I, I think it's gilding the lily, to be honest, if I put anything else down here. So 
I'm just going to clip that off, right? And then I'm going to clip some of this extra business here so it's not all over the place. And let's take a look. Look at how gorgeous, if I do say so myself, and this loop will just open up and come around that bead. I could have made that loop even a little bit smaller, but I don't think it's going anywhere. But on yours, and I could come in and re-macrame over this just a little to make that loop just a little smaller. And if I hadn't been doing this live on camera, I probably would have gotten this a, a little bit better. But you could also just stitch it with a needle and thread, just like a hair to close it up. Um, but when you're measuring, you'll do a little bit of a better job than I did there. But look at how nice that looks on the end. Okay, really very pretty, I think. So the project, folks, is called Papillon. It's in our Born Yesterday project here at Bead Shop. Do not forget, folks, that you can find us um, let me get all of this info. I'm busy. I'm also reading Janice's comments here. So I'll share a couple of comments that she had in just a second. But let me say to you that if you're watching this on replay or watching this live, thanks so much for joining us. You can find all of our information, beadshop.com related on all of our social, as well as our website, uh, Instagram at beadshop.com. Give us a tag. If you make anything with our products or projects, we'd love to add you to our daily stories on Insta. Um, join us over at the bead table for our wonderful Facebook group. Lots of knowledge getting bannered about over there. And of course, hit that like, subscribe, and notification button on our YouTube channel. All of your social shares and your social media support helps other beaters find beadshop.com. And the more beaters that find beadshop.com, um, the better off we are. So we really, really appreciate that because without you folks keeping this small business in business, we wouldn't be here. I also wanted to say a big thank you again to those of you who um, are donating or plan on donating to uh, the makery, our friend Francesca's um, uh, studio who um, had a catastrophic fire this past Saturday. You can go to the Makery page on Bead Shop, or you can also open up your newsletters for more details about that. Or if you joined us late, you can rewatch the broadcast and learn a little bit more um, about there. But uh, a lot of love going out to you, Francesca, and you, Nick, as well. Um, we had a couple of really great um, comments from Janice I, that I wanted to um, uh, uh, share. Janice also said about this project, you can do this design on a single strand of leather or Chinese knotting card cord or wax linen down the center. Those strands don't need to be doubled. Um, it's just for the very fine thread that we want it doubled. And uh, you can find all of the Born Yesterday projects right on our website under born yesterday. This sample is called Papillon. Um, and just as a reminder, the I Ching coins that we love so much, they're going to be back in this weekend. So uh, if you see them in some of the projects, they will be available. Um, I also use them in my earring projects. So those will be, those will be um, back in. Um, so thanks folks so much. On Friday, take a look at your newsletters, kids because I have another Tucson goodie for you. It's a limited, one of my limited pearl mix. I call it Sonora in tribute to the great Sonoran Desert Museum in Arizona. And you'll see more of that. I'm gonna work with it on Friday. And yes, these are freshwater pearls. And yes, they are that big. So I will see you all on Friday for that project. I can't wait to see what you folks do with this Born Yesterday project. And do remember that these enamel pieces, if we're out of them, either now as you're watching or later on when you rewatch this project, these are pieces that we're going to be keeping in stock. Okay, so uh, don't worry, they'll be back in if you don't see them. Uh, thanks, folks. I will see you on Friday. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you soon.